Okay, so I've made some reasonable progress on my model. I've obviously got a long way to go to finish my design, but because I've got all of the main elements there, now I can set up my views. And then once I've set those views up, arrange them uh, on some sheets, similar to the example uh, I'm just showing you there. And then there's nothing stopping me coming back later and developing my design further. And then of course, those views can easily be updated uh, on all of my sheets. So it doesn't really matter what stage you're at, you can set up some of your views to maybe get used to this process and also some of your sheets. Again, just to uh, get a good idea of the, uh, the tools involved. So I'm gonna start with my floor plan. So I've opened up my original floor plan and I'm also gonna open up the copy that I've made which you can see is called Ground Floor Copy 1. And so that you're not afraid to, um, to modify these views or just get rid of them if you don't think they're necessary, I'm going to show you there, I can right click on this Ground Floor Copy 1 and then go to Delete. And that's fine. I could even delete the original Ground Floor Plan and easily make it again. It's not a problem. So these are just views of the model, they're not the model itself. Okay, so I'm going to now make a new copy of my ground floor plan by right clicking on that ground floor view. I'll go to duplicate view. And I think I've said this before, if you're not sure which option to use there, use the middle one, duplicate with detailing. That's generally the option you want to use. So I've now got an exact copy of my original ground floor plan. Remember, it's just a view of the model, so if I delete something in this view, it's deleted uh, in all my other views. And now I'm going to right click on that ground floor copy one and go to rename, and I'll give it the name I want it to have on my sheet, which is ground floor plan. So then, just going back to the brief, you can see that we need this first floor plan to be at 1 to 100. So, bottom left, we've got the scale option there, and I'll simply choose 1 to 100, and that part's done. And then you can see more clearly that I've got these elevation symbols surrounding my building in outer space and we don't need to see those at all. So then you can easily hide things by right clicking on that object, hiding view category. It's one of the most important things when you start setting your views up, that you hide the things that aren't necessary. So by hiding the category, I'll be hiding all of those elevation views. Now I'll zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna select my section line and then use the grips to stretch that and bring that in closer to my floor plan so it doesn't take up so much room. Zoom in a bit further and then you can see I've got these reference planes. I don't want to see those at all on my sheet so again I can select one, right click, hide in view, category. And notice the dimensions went as well because they were uh, measuring the reference points. Now, I don't want to see all of this rendering that I've done, so I'm going to change the graphics there back to hidden line, and that's maybe good enough uh, for me to place that view now on a sheet. So you should do a little bit of view set up before you go to place any views on the sheet, but then you can usually Go and start working with your sheets before very long and you'll see in your project browser, <coughs> when you scroll down, there's a category, if you haven't seen it already, called Sheets All. I think most of you have done this. When you right click on Sheets All, you can go to New Sheet. 
click load. And then browse using the that look in option up there. You can go down to student resources or the P drive. EDU DC interior design. And then Revit Library. If you've made a shortcut for that, of course, you can use the shortcut. So then you have a title blocks folder where you'll see I've made a lot of extra title blocks that you can, of course, use. And so clicking on the file there, we get a preview over on the right. Uh, the other option is just to right click and you can go to view either large or extra large icons to get a better view of those. So notice how as well as the, uh, the pages that have the title blocks down the bottom or on the side, I've got quite a few that are, that are basically blank pages. And they're some of the most useful. Because quite often you want a print from Revit that doesn't have a title block. So if you want to go into InDesign or Photoshop to finish off your graphic layout, you often just want to get the plans and the sections and the other views out of Revit without this technical looking title block that Revit gives you. So you've got those blank pages for that. Maybe okay, we'll come back to that though. So I'm going to choose one of these title blocks so that does have, or one of these pages so that does have a title block down the bottom. So I'll start with this one, A3 Metric DCE 2012, if you're wondering, it's the one I'll use. So you can change it afterwards. So I'll double click on that. Uh, so I used A3 metric DCE 2012. So I'll click OK. Don't worry, you can use any A3 page basically and you can always change it later. So I'll click OK and you can see I've got this title block with our logo here. And they're very easy to change if you want to make your own as well. So now I'm going to go back to my project browser and simply find the view that I've just created, ground floor plan. And I'm going to drag that now onto the page and click to place it. There we go. So that's taken care of the first view, which is the floor plan at 1 to 100. Now I want to show you how easy it is to make a copy of that floor plan at 1 to 50. Now you might already realise that I could duplicate this view just like I did before. Oh, you just click and drag. So from the project browser. You just drag that view. Yep, just drag it across onto the page and then click to place it. That's it. Okay, so I could copy this view using duplicate view and, and repeat the process, but then set the scale to 1 to 50. And that works. So I'm going to show you another way, which is I think sometimes even better, on the view tab. There's this option called call out. So with a call out, or with the, just clicking on the call out tool, I'm then going to click to make a rectangle around just the bathroom. So notice how it's giving me a reference. So over here that's called a reference, that label, and this dashed line is what that reference or that view is going to show. And you can select the reference or the uh, marquee and adjust the position of the tag. But notice that reference hasn't been filled in yet. So you can see in the project browser, I've now got another copy of my, of my ground floor plan. It's called ground floor plan callout one. 
So notice when I open it, it only shows what was inside that reference or that rectangle. And notice how the scale automatically has gone to 1 to 50. Right, so they're a very simple thing to make. So again, on the view tab, you've got that call out option. So I'll go down now to my sheet and I'll stop after this but I'll, and I'll give you some time to try it. So now on my sheet, I'm going to drag my new view, the ground floor plan call out, and click to place it just under my other floor plan. So then we can see in this reference, it's filled it in with the right values. So if we look at the title block, this is sheet A102. I'll change that now. Let's make it sheet, just as an example, A103. And I'll go and change this view by selecting the plan. I can change the name. So I'll call it, instead of ground floor plan, let's say bathroom Flo floor plan and just take off the call out one. And I know that I'll probably have another view on this sheet, so I'm going to change this one, the number, to number three. Now, just to finish off, I'll show you the reference automatically is updated. This is one of the best features in Revit, the fact that it does the referencing for you, unlike AutoCAD, where you have to go and do this manually. So how easy is that? We've got now two different floor plans showing the same space, basically, but at different scales. And that's a really important thing for interiors. So you'll often have a master plan or a plan that shows the whole level, and then various call-outs or views taken off from that that are showing more detail, rather than trying to show a whole level of your building at 1 to 50 or 1 to 20 or something where it's going to be far too big. Okay, so uh, just so it's clear, maybe I'll show you this plan here. If I select it, you'll see I can change it in properties to 1 to 50. And that's far too big. I could probably just fit it onto the sheet, but it wouldn't be the best. So it's much better to have it at 1 to 100, undo that, and then have that more detailed plan at 1 to 50, which is what we draw the dimensions on as well. Come back to that later. But that's all you need to start with, so I'll maybe do another video on setting up some different view types, but I'll give you some time just to try that. Make sure you've at least got a sheet with a couple of floor plans at different scales. 1 to 100 and 1 to 50.